Hi, welcome to Intermediate Logic Lesson 18. We're looking at conditional proofs. And what is a conditional proof? It is a special rule in formal proof which allows us to assume the antecedent of a conditional. And once we deduce the consequent, to conclude the entire conditional. So what does that mean? Basically, I hope you remember what the antecedent is. So if I have uh, a statement such as if L, then N, then I hope that you remember that L is the antecedent and N is the consequent. So what am I going to assume? The second part. I'm sorry, I'm going to assume the first part, the antecedent. Uh, let's look at the statement. If you love your parents, then you will obey them. Therefore, if you love your parents and respect them, you will obey them. Now... This is a simple argument, and we need to break it down and put it into um, symbolic form so that we can do uh, our, our long proof. We're going to do this the long way first, and then we will shorten it. So L for love, then O for obey. If you love your parents, then you obey. And then the next part is just the conclusion, and we have an and. So we're going to include, uh, put in inclusion L and R, both L and R, then O. Pretty simple statement. Now, uh, let's go ahead and solve this. The same way that we've been doing in previous chapters, um, by trying to uh, conclude, well, the conclusion. Of this statement. So number two, line two, we're going to look at this and let's do, let's do this and we're going to do addition because addition says that uh, P, if P, or I'm sorry, just P, um, then P or Q, right? And so the L then O is uh, representing P and then we have an or not R and we negated this for a good reason and we'll see um, in a few minutes when we when we work through it why we did this so now what do we do well probably the next thing that we should do is to find a way to switch these two around. And we use line two and commutation. Why commutation? Because it allows us to, um, if we have P or Q, we can switch it to Q or P. And that's just what we did. So looking at it now, we need to come up with a way. Look, we're, we're trying to figure out what's different. Well, I think we need to switch around our primary, um, we need to put there. We need to, that's just to get rid of the negation. And if we do that, um, we're allowed to do that because of material implication, which states that um, P then Q is the same as not P or Q. There we go. And we are almost there. Look at that. We need to, we need to, let's move this up. Let's take this entire thing. There we go. Now we have room. So line five. And uh, looking at this, I know that I need to switch this around. And then I need to make my conditional into a conjunction. And what's going to allow me to do that? Well, I see something here that takes the P and Q, uh, then R, and it's interchangeable with P, then Q, then R. Uh, so I'm going to use this, and I am going to switch around the R, then L then O. 
this way. And we're using um, exportation. It's what uh, allows us to do this. Uh, line four. All right. So look how close we are. We are almost there. So what's the difference? We need to switch the R and the L again. And we've already used this action. So what did we use last time? We used commutation. So let's do that again so that we can switch those two around. And we used line five, commutation. Look at that. We did it. QED, we are complete. Now, this is the traditional way of solving our conditional proofs, uh, of, of proving the validity. Now, um, looking at our original, our original proof here, um, the statement, if we wrote it a different way, we probably could have solved it in less steps and still had it in the, in the same same meaning. Uh, I, I kind of want to show you how to do that. So let's find our original statement. <clears throat> if you love your parents, then you will obey them. Therefore, if you love your parents and respect them, you will obey them. Let's rewrite it. If you love your parents, you will obey them, period. You love your parents and respect them, period. Therefore, you obey them. Now, if we take this statement and we write it, it you will see that it means the same thing. <clears throat> and it's easier to prove. So, love, then obey. And love and respect. And conclusion, therefore, oh. Now, the difference is just right there. We basically made those into individual lines, individual sentences, individual statements. So we put them on two different lines. Now we have to work with L, then O, and L and R. And we want to take that, and we can use simplification to isolate one of our terms. Okay. So we isolated L. Now let's think about how simply we could get to O. Uh, so line four, we could use material implication uh, and conclude O using line one and, and three. Okay, so that is our conclusion. We're done. Look how simple that was. In comparison, we just kind of rewrote um, the statement. Now, that was just to show you that it was not a complicated statement, that it was valid. Um, and it's something that we innately knew that, well, that statement's valid. And when we know that innately a statement is valid, we can use something called the conditional proof. And that allows us to not rewrite the statement but to kind of do a shorter version. So we are going to assume the antecedent. And let's just... <clears throat> We're going to assume the antecedent of the original statement. This is the original statement. L then Q. I'm sorry, L then O. <laughs> Therefore, L and R then O. Okay, so in doing this... Our antecedent of the conclusion is the entire enclosed term of L and R. So line two, L and R. That's what we're going to assume, and we're going to put conditional proof assumption, CPA. Um, it's the antecedent that we, that we assumed. Now line two... Um, we want to look for something maybe to simplify it so that we can just get L by itself. What does that? Well, simplification does that. So, um, simplification basically says that if you have a P and Q, then you can simplify it to just P. All right, so let's do that with our, 
There you go. And line four. Now, what do we do? What do we do? Um, we want to work on material implication with this because, I'm sorry, not material, uh, modus ponens, um, because line one and three um, gives us O, which, look, it is the consequent of our conclusion. Now, what does it mean? We did it. We've already assumed the consequent or concluded the consequent, which means that we can assume the entire consequent. We've assumed the The consequent of the conclusion, so we got to conclude that line two through four, um, and we put our CP for um, the conclusion of the uh, conditional proof. Now it, you can see that we initially assumed the antecedent L and R, and as soon as we got to the consequent O, then we were able to go ahead and assume the entire conclusion and QED, we're done.